Hey everybody, I've still got some more films to go through from Toronto Film Fest, but I decided I would tackle a couple that I saw at Vancouver Film Fest. These ones will be getting a wide release in the next month or two, so I figured it makes sense. The first of these films is The Favorite, the new movie from Yorgos Lanthimos. This is the same director as Dogtooth, The Lobster, and The Killing of a Sacred Deer, all of which are fantastic movies that I would highly recommend. Now this particular movie is an 18th century period piece, and anyone familiar with the director will notice that that's a bit of a departure from his previous works. Still, he manages to capture much of his signature tone that we're all accustomed to. Once again, this is a film that is tense, bizarre, dramatic, and hilarious. It's incredibly well shot for the most part, although I do have to say that there is one tiny thing about the cinematography that kind of distracted me. There's maybe three or four shots in the film that use a fisheye lens, and it's just kind of distracting and unfitting. Perhaps if it were more consistent, then it would be something that I would get used to, but they don't show up all that often, so when they do, it just feels kind of out of place. Regardless, like I said, the majority of the shots in this movie look fantastic. It's also incredibly well lit, and the overall presentation kind of reminds me of Barry Lyndon. The acting in this movie is phenomenal. There are no weak performances, but Olivia Coleman totally steals the show. She does such an amazing job, and I really hope she at least gets an Oscar nomination or something. She absolutely transforms into this character and displays every emotion so genuinely. Quite honestly, her performance might be my favorite of the year so far. The story the story in this film and the way it's presented is massively entertaining. I don't really want to spoil anything, but let's just say that it's an interesting theory on the private lives of some real historic figures. They basically took real events and then added some creative artistic liberties to explain what's happening behind the scenes. It's very watchable, exhilarating, and disturbing. This is just overall a fantastic movie and you should check it out as soon as it gets a wide release on November 23rd. Yorgos Lanthimos is a consistently great storyteller and the talented cast of this film really helps bring it all together. And I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. Who knows, maybe it'll be a 9 the next time I watch it. I don't know, you tell me. Another movie I saw at Vancouver Film Fest was the new Lars von Trier film, The House That Jack Built. Now Lars von Trier is definitely an interesting director to say the least. He is responsible for making some of my all-time favorite films, but he is also responsible for making some not-so-great films. Either way, at least you can be sure that by checking out one of his movies you'll be watching something unique, I guess. And that's what I got from this movie, but it was also a very frustrating experience. This is essentially a character study on the director himself and just how far one's head can go up their ass. He is just so fucking full of himself at this point, and it is absolutely obnoxious just how much it shows through his films. There's already a pretty shining example of that in Nymphomaniac, and you can see that just by watching my review, I guess. But it seems like it's only getting worse with each movie he makes. There's this pointless narration between characters that essentially just explain the movie to you. Every room for interpretation is just decimated by these characters just explaining shit to you, to the point where it's just embarrassing and comical. Holy shit, that scene with the lampposts was fucking ridiculous. The narration even goes on to start pontificating about the purpose of violence in art and film. And as this narration is going on, we are presented to a clip show of other films by Lars von Trier. It felt like we all paid money to watch him jerk off in front of us. It was so obnoxious, and I get that people are gonna say that he was completely self-aware while doing it. There's plenty of people that believe that Lars von Trier is just intentionally making annoying movies now. But even if we assume that, is it not just a little upsetting that he stopped making real movies and is only making fuck you movies now? And that's what this movie felt like. It felt like a big fuck you to anybody that paid to watch it. Even the meat of the film where we're watching the main character killing people is just so unrewarding. The dialogue is unbearable and repetitive. The two and a half hour runtime of this film is not justified at all. They keep playing the same goddamn song that wasn't even that good in the first place. It's not cool, it's not fun, it's not interesting. It's a pretty joyless experience whether that's the intent or not. Just shut up about the analogies between Predator and Prey, you said it like 50 times. Stop showing the same clip of Glenn Gold playing the piano, you've done it like 50 times. It's an annoying movie that I just wanted to shut up. The most consistent emotion that I felt throughout this entire film was just feeling irritated. Now obviously this movie markets itself as being some sort of hardcore, brutal murder story, but even in that sense it's hardly satisfying. Many of the deaths are just flat out comical in ways that don't even seem intentional. That CG when the person fell over from getting shot was just laughable. To the movie's credit, it did eventually wind up becoming interesting, but that was only during the 
last 20 minutes of this two and a half hour long film. As for whether or not the entire experience is worth it, I'm not sure. I can't really say that I regret watching this film. Part of me even wants to see it again, but I have a funny feeling that that's just a bad idea. Even once the film did finally get interesting, it still wasn't amazing. Like, yeah, it got interesting, but it still felt incredibly stupid. If the final 20 minutes of the film wasn't there, then this would just be a complete waste of time. And who knows, maybe there's an argument to be made that that's the point. But regardless, the meat of this film is just watching Lars von Trier shove his head super fucking far up his own ass. Even in the end credits, he can't stop jerking off, where you see him credit himself for the concept of the house. Okay, Lars. Anyway, check this one out if you want. Like I said, it is its own movie. Just don't let the trailers fool you into thinking that this is anything other than an incredibly annoying experience. I hope that one day in the future, Lars von Trier starts making movies again instead of just making fuck you movies. Because regardless of his intentions, it is not really something that I enjoy seeing from him. And I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10.